Pangyarihan siyang karunungan tanging buhay. Magandang araw po. Welcome to our 2 p.m. online worship service. Sinabi po ng Panginoon that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Yun po yung pangako na panghawakan natin araw-araw. At sinabi niya po sa salita niya, in Psalm 29, verses 3, 4, then, and, then 10 and 11, he says, The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Ang panalangin ko po sa bawat isa sa atin ay makapakinig po tayo sa Panginoon that will give us strength and will give us peace as we call upon his name today and forevermore. Let's all worship God today. You said it. You said it. You said it. I believe God. You said it. You said it. You said it. You said it. I believe God. You said it. I have a hope that cannot be shaken. I hold on to all you've given me. You give me joy in the darkest hour. I will walk in your promises. You are faithful. Your word has strong power. All who trust you will not be put to shame. My soul and her will you lead or follow. I will walk in your promises. You are unstoppable.
the Lord. And what is the will of the Lord? The will of the Lord is to abide in Him. For His will is good, pleasing, and perfect for all of us and for all of us who believe in His name. Let's all pray. Panginoon, salamat God that Your will for us is to abide in Your beautiful name the name of Jesus Christ. Salamat, Panginoon, that your will is good, pleasing, and perfect. Wala nang ibang way 
and will, Father God, kaming gustong tahakin kundi ang daan na itinuro mo sa amin na pwede naming makita sa bawat salita na aming binabasa, Lord. Sa Bible, Lord, whenever we come to you into your presence, Lord, we hear you with the words that you speak to us. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are and for what you have done sa buhay namin. Amen and amen. Excited po ako today because we're going to know about the will of the Lord. And what is the will of the Lord? That is to, as- to ascribe in His name, to abide in His name. And the one who will teach us and preach to us about the will of the Lord is none other than the executive director of Every Nation Philippines Churches. And that is Pastor John Naron. Kilala ko na po si Pastor John since my campus days dahil naririnig ko na yung pangalan niya. So passionate in reaching the next generation, the students in the campuses, and even his heart to go to places to continue to advance the kingdom of God and make disciples. And we continue to make disciples do one-to-one That's why this coming February 26 and March 5, we'll have our Victory Weekend. So meron pa po tayong time to do one-to-one, to make disciples, to help other people follow Christ, and to send them this coming Victory Weekend. Excited po ako on what God will do in and through the people that we disciple. So again, kita po tayo this coming Victory Weekend. And Uh, uh, speaking about the will of God, the will of God for us is to be blessed and to bless His name. That's why when we bless His name, we speak about His word in First Chronicles chapter 29. Both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might And in your hand, it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, O God, and praise your glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able thus to offer willingly? For all things come from you, and your own have we given you. Let's all pray. Father, we... Acknowledge that all come from you, that all belongs to you, that all provisions have been given by you. And thank you, God, that in your hand are power and might and your power, Father God, that makes us great and to give us strength. Salamat, Panginoon, that your provision is an ending sa buhay namin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sa patuloy po natin pagbibigay sa Panginoon, ang kingdom, ang kaharian ng Panginoon ay patuloy na nag advance sa buhay ng maraming tao. And one of the stories that we will hear today is about a person that has been that uh, has been transformed through our real life foundation. So we can be partners on what God is doing in the lives Of the, of the students, the lives of the next generation, and even the lives of the people who have different faith with us. But let's hear what God has done in her life. Let's watch this video. At Real Life, we build different partnerships that help us provide access to education to underprivileged students throughout the Philippines. One of our partners is the Bridge Student Center, an interreligious nonprofit organization that aims to serve communities and promote peace by bridging the gap among different cultures, ethnic groups, tribes, and religions. Our first alumna in Marawi is Raisa Haji Omar from the Bridge Student Center in their area. Hindi po ako lumaki sa biological parents ko kasi sa Grandparents ako lumakay. May sakit pa yung papa ko, tapos hindi makapasok sa work. Hindi sila makapag-work ng matagal. Nakilala ko po yung Bridge Student Center. 
super na close ko sa kanila. Tapos sabi ko, nahihirapan na talaga. Baka hindi na talaga ako mag-enroll. Tapos sabi niya sa kanila, Krista, huwag ayun, huwag kang mawala ng pag-asa. Makakahanap tayo ng pag-provide. And then yun, bigla na lang ano, nag-announce yung RL na lumabas na yung result na ano, mga pumasa. And then, super happy ako. Sabi ko, grabe yung, ano, yung placing. Then, na-realize ko na talaga na kailangan ko din talaga mag-aral para din sa sarili ko at para din makatulong sa ibang tao. Yung sa barangay namin, ang dami yung bata na hindi nakakapag-aral, para sa akin talaga, na-encourage talaga ako na gusto ko talaga magturo ng mga bata na hindi kaya mag-aral. Gusto ko pumunta sa mga lugar na walang mga paaralan kasi gusto ko mag-share ng knowledge, gusto ko matuto yung mga bata bilang papalit sa generation. Kailangan natin talaga mas magsipag mag-aral para ma-guide natin yung mga susunod na mga generation. Sa lahat po ng bumubuo ng Real Life Foundation, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat-lahat na binigay nyo, tulong nyo, ma-financial man, or mga prayers nyo. Grabe yung appreciate po namin na mga scholar. Super laki ng may ampag nyo sa buhay namin. So, thank you, RL. We count it a privilege that we get to bring hope and education to the underprivileged youth in Marawi. Thank you for your support and generosity that help us impart values to our scholars. This enables them to participate in building their community and the nation. Now that was a wonderful update from Real Life and I hope you were encouraged. Happy Sunday again everyone. I'm John and I again thank you so much Pastor Jansen and Joe for the invitation to preach the word today. Now we continue in our series on Abide. In fact, this will be our sixth week and we will conclude uh, this whole series today. And that's pretty exciting because for the past weeks we've been learning that to abide is to continue in our faith, to stay in our faith daily consistently through each season of life and ministry till we fulfill God's purpose and finish strong. And I hope that that very simple concept of abiding in Christ and His Word will really define our lives and that we will begin to go back to God's Word on a regular basis. We will pray to Him and surrender our life to Him on a regular basis. So as we conclude this series today, we're, we're asking this question that in this whole concept of abiding, where does the evil one figure in all of this? And if, there, and, and, if, and if so, if there is a pull against abiding by the evil one, how can still we consistently abide in Christ and His Word? Today we're reading from John chapter 17. And the background of this passage is that this is towards the end of Jesus' life, right before the cross. And he and the Apostle John recorded a very beautiful prayer that Jesus gave for us for first for his disciples and then for those who would follow in believing them. And this is a prayer that applies directly to us. It would be good for us to be able to learn from it today. And, you know, a side note, it has a lot to say about abiding. We're reading from John chapter 17. Uh, we'll begin reading from verse 6 through 19. That's a bit long, but, you know, if you have a Bible, go ahead and open uh, your Bibles now or open your phones now to that and just follow along as we read. In verse 6, it says, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Jump to verse 11. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you've given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Verse 14. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so have I sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. Now let's just pray together. Lord, 
with what you've left us, your name and your word, and how you've left that to us to sanctify us, to set us apart from the world. Lord, allow us to recapture those truths again. May, may you cause those truths to just uh, grow deep in us and allow us to understand how your name protects us from the evil one, how you are able to draw us closer to you in a stronger manner than the pull of the evil, evil one towards the world. Lord, thank you. Bless our time together today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I remember looking back in my life, when you think about how the enemy has tried to lure you into some decisions that you know, had you given in to those, it would utterly ruin your life. Would you be able to pinpoint some of those times? Now, I remember <clears throat> when I was just starting out in the faith, excuse me, when I was just starting out in the faith, um, part of the immediate uh, temptation is to be distracted from my Christian faith, whether that be by premature relationships. Well, I, I, I was reached out in high school and grew, through, grew in my faith through college. And there was a constant pull to be distracted, to be distracted by, by pursuing uh, um, premature relationships, uh, being distracted by gaming, <laughs> being distracted by other pursuits, or just being distracted by not giving your all to Jesus. And I, I, I still vividly remember those opportunities that if I had given in, it would have, you know, it would have, I would have spiraled down in my faith. And that was very significant, especially for the first year of my Christian walk. I remember when I already began working, there was a lot of pull towards sexual temptation. Some of you might be able to understand that. And, you know, giving in to those would have ruined my life as well. And I, I praise God just for sparing me from being, from, from going that route. Now, finally, um, towards the middle, you know, towards the early part of my career uh, as a physical therapist, um, God was already calling me to the ministry. And again, that, that was an opportunity to once again choose. Will you obey God completely or will you choose what you want? And I, I realized that had, had I not responded to the calling of God, uh, it would have definitely changed the trajectory of my life. I mean, I probably would have a fair measure of success, but I'd probably be just going around in circles because I'm still not pursuing God's purpose for my life. What is that to you? What is that, you know, what, what are those points in your life that there were opportunities for you to actually choose God or choose the work of the enemy or choose the pull of the world? And do you recognize that had you given in, it would have changed your life completely, radical, or ruined your life? Or now that you, or now that you may have given in, now you've actually experienced, experienced the results of that, but now you've learned and now you're pursuing God wholeheartedly. Now that's what, that's what we'd like to go to in our conversation today uh, in the Word. As we talk about abiding, there will always be a pull by the world to not abide in Jesus. There will always be a pull by the enemy to not abide in Jesus. And how can you consistently make the decision to abide in Jesus again today? <clears throat> Let's go back to John chapter 17. Going back to verse 6. I love this part. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. So Jesus was talking about, he was leaving the world. And so you would hear the phrase out of the world, the world repeated over and over in the passage that we just read. And in this part, Jesus says, I've manifested your name. I've revealed your name. Pinakilala kita, Panginoon. Pinakilala kita, aking ama, sa, sa mga taong kinausap ko. Pinakilala ko ang iyong pangalan. So now to reveal God's name to the people is to reveal who God is. And that's significant because that resulted in people believing in Jesus, believing in the Father. Further, that verse says, Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Did you notice that? Two things that Jesus mentioned that he manifested to the people. He manifested God's name to them, and they have kept his word. So God's name and his word. Jesus' name and his word. Did you know that those two things are pretty significant? God's name and his word. In fact, if I may uh, bring you to Psalm 138. Psalm 1, this is Old Testament. Remember, Old Testament. Jesus was saying this in the New Testament. In Psalm 138 in verse 2, it says there, I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. So he was the psalmist worshiping God. And then he says a very strong principle. A very um, important truth. He would say, For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. And in Jesus' ministry, these are exactly the same two things that he represented to the people. Jesus 
First thought on this passage, Jesus revealed his name and his word to us, to them, and by extension to us. So the very first or the priority that Jesus would reveal to us in terms of truth that would change us is God's name and God's word. How have you encountered God's name in your life? Yes, you've believed in Jesus as the Son of God. You've recognized that the name of Jesus is powerful. And you've begun to surrender yourself. In fact, when we worship and we praise, ang itinataas natin yung pangalan ni Jesus. When we pray, uh, we, we conclude our prayers in the name of Jesus. We receive the answers to our prayers through the name of Jesus, through the promise that Jesus says it will happen, that the Father will give it to you as you pray, if, if you pray it in my name. When we <clears throat> pray for people for healing, and when we, when we go to them and we allow them to, uh, when, when, uh, when we pray for them, we pray in the name of Jesus and we believe that the name of Jesus has power. God's name has been revealed to us. Yahweh, Jesus. And I pray that you may have experienced God in a deeper way as you've surrendered to that name. God has also revealed this word to us. Jesus would speak of the Father. Jesus would speak words that are now recorded in the New Testament. At dahil doon, meron tayong nababasa, meron tayong napapaniwalaan, at yung mga salita na binitawan niya ay lahat katotohanan. Jesus' word equivalent to truth. And so we've come to understand what truth is much, much better. Jesus revealed His name and His word to us. So that's the first thing we learn coming from this passage. But jumping to verse 11... So what we'd like to do now from verses 11 to 19 is, you know, find a different emphasis on what the, name of the, what the name of God does for us and what the Word of God does to us. So we find in verse 11, and I am no longer in the world. There, Jesus repeats that phrase again. But they are in the world. Hmm. And I am coming to you. Now, that creates sort of a dilemma. I'm not in the world. I'm no longer in the world. They are in the world. Sila ay nasa mundo pa rin. Tapos, Ako paalis na. So, maiiwanan sila. Now, Jesus was saying this because he was aware of the influence of the world, the sin of the world, the collective sin of the world that would try to destroy people's lives. And he was also very much aware of the one driving that sin. Behind it is the enemy, the devil. And Jesus was saying, I'm going to leave them. I mean, what will happen to them? I'm going to leave the world. They are still in the world. What will what will make sure that they can continue to abide in me, that they continue to remain in me and that the world would not be able to pull, it, uh, to pull them back you know, to the mold of the world, to the sin of the world. And then Jesus says this prayer, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me. So meaning the name Yahweh that was revealed by God to Moses was the same name that was now given to Jesus. And the way that Jesus reveals himself to people, Yahweh being equivalent to Jesus, here you are now. Jesus is saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name which you have given me that they may be one even as we are one. When Jesus says, keep them in your name, that word keep is to put a hedge. We hear that phrase, a hedge of protection. Yes, a hedge of thorns to be able to keep those coming from the outside to prevent them from coming in. It's like a protection. So Jesus was saying, Holy Father, Keep them in your name. Apparently, Jesus is saying that my name, the name you've given me, is what will protect them from the evil one. It's what will protect them from the world. So here, the second thought, the second thing that we learn from, from this part of the passage is that Jesus' name keeps us. Now, hindi naman tayo sanay dun sa word na keep, di ba? Parang pag keep, itatago ka, ililigpit ka, negative yun, di ba? Uh, hindi, keep means to protect. Keep means to guard. Keep means to uphold. Keep means to make sure that you're able to stand. Keep means to cause God's protection to surround you as a shield. So when Jesus says, keep them in your name, Jesus' name is so powerful that it's able to keep us. To keep us from what? To keep us from the destruction given by the world because of sin and to keep us from the influence of the evil one. Jesus' name is powerful. Why do you need to be kept and to be guarded? Because we remain in the world. Now, we are all too familiar with this. Sobra nating alam, may mga kakilala ka, may mga kaibigan ka, na they've been following Jesus for a time, but then the pull of the world has overwhelmed them. Or maybe the circumstances that they faced, 
You know, it just kept coming at them over and over again. And they were quite faithful at the beginning, but then eventually, bumigay na rin talaga sila. At sa totoo lang, who is spared from that? Sino ba naman ang, ang ganun talaga kalakas? Pero apparently, there is a way. When we abide in Jesus' name, Jesus' name protects us and keeps us. Now, you know this. When we pray, we enforce the truth of God's promise when we pray in Jesus' name. Ito, hindi ko alam kung nasubukan nyo na po ito. Have you had a chance to drive out demons? You know, that, that's part of the ministry that God's given us, right? And you drive demons out from people in Jesus' name. When you believe God for healing, you lay hands on people, you ask them to get healed, you pray in Jesus' name. The power of the name of Jesus is released. Is released when we speak it. Many times in, um, you know, my, my, my children, um, around two or three years ago, I, I have two younger ones, uh, a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. Interestingly, around two years ago, they, they were beset by negative thoughts. Kami mismo nagulat kami. Bakit? Often, they would come to us, sa amin dalawa ni Let, and they would say, Dad, Mom, uh, pray for me because I'm having negative thoughts again. Then they're crying. And then they just, what, Anak, what sort of negative thoughts? You like you're dying and so on. Really? Tapos pag, pag, pag inisip mo, paano naman nila may isip yung mga bagay na yun? Alam mo lang na it's an external influence of some sort that's trying to pull them, that's trying to destroy them, that's trying to inflict fear on them. And so, I had to come, I had to talk to this uh, son of mine who was 12, well, at that time, he was around 10, and this daughter of mine who was around 9, I had to tell them and, you know, talk to them and say, Mga anak, when that happens, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. The principle in scripture is this. It says, submit yourself to the Lord. Humble yourself to the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will give you grace. So submit yourself to the Lord, and then you resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So I, I had to explain that to them. I mean, they were experiencing a measure of what they call spiritual warfare even at an early age. And I realized God was doing that. You know, well, at that point, I didn't really know what to do yet. But now, in retrospect, I realized God was doing something to strengthen the faith of these two young kids. And I had to ask, tell them, every time the thought comes, every time the thought comes, the Bible also says that you take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So in that moment, when those negative thoughts come, instead of cowering down in fear, anak, I need you to fight. I need you to fight. You take God's word and you hear, Lord, I surrender myself to you. I submit myself to God. And then you resist the devil. So I had to ask them, anak, this is how you do it. You say, devil, in the name of Jesus, I resist you. Leave me now. And, you know, it's, that's, that might sound pretty weird to some of us, but... I had to teach that to them because that's scriptural. And I had to teach them. I had to teach them to let the name of Jesus defend them. Have you experienced the name of Jesus defending you? Have you experienced the protection of the name of Jesus over your life? Now back to the story, it took them around three to four months. But later on, you know, we're looking back at it now and realize their faith was strengthened and those negative thoughts are no more. So what the enemy was Suppose uh, what the enemy meant for evil, God was actually able to turn around for the good in Jesus' name or through Jesus' name. Now, you remember in the Old Testament, um, Aaron would give his uh, priestly blessing. And you probably, you've heard, heard this many times. We pray this towards the end of the service, uh, like a benediction. In Numbers chapter 6, in verse 24, it says there, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And then in verse 27, it says, So shall they, referring to Aaron and the priests, so shall they put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. There is a power, there's power that happens uh, that's released when the name of God is put on the people of Israel. It protects them, it blesses them. And apparently, that's what Jesus would like to also do to you now, to be able to protect you because we remain in the world. At night, we have an opportunity to pray for our children. Part of how I pray for, our, for my kids would be, I bless you in the name of Jesus. And that's a powerful thing. When, we, when they leave the house, nung nag-aaral sila, di ba? O kaya, pag ikaw, papasok ka sa trabaho, and you say, the Lord bless you, 
and then you pray in the name of Jesus on them. Something happens. You put God's name on them and the Lord blesses them. Now, they who are blessed, they could not be cursed. You know that, right? Do you remember Balaam and the talking donkey? Oh, that story in the Old Testament. You know, there was Balak the king who was trying to curse the Israelites. So he called Balaam the sorcerer to curse the Israelites. But every time it would be a blessing. Kasi nga, mahirap tala, hindi mo pepeding a curse ang isang tao na blines na ni Lord. And on whom the name of God rests on them. So how do we do that? How do we let Jesus' name protect us or keep us? When we pray that on ourselves and when we pray Jesus' name on our children, when we pray the blessing of God on our family and on everything that you put your hands on, when you pray the blessing of God in the name of Jesus. Now, I know, but is that even concrete? Well, spiritually and you know, by faith, yes, it is concrete. When you do so, you'll be able to see the protection of God come on the things, the family, the people, the businesses, the things that we pray for. All right, let me now bring us to the latter part of the passage. In verse 14, so we've, we've learned that Jesus has actually manifested or revealed his name and his word, the name of God and the word of God to the people. And then we understand that Jesus' name keeps us. But then what does the word do for us? In verse 14, it says, I have given them your word. And the world has hated them. Yeah, there. That's what the word does for us. The world will begin to hate us. <laughs> Papaisip ka, pero totoo yun, di ba? Totoo naman. When you receive the word of God, then you became distinct from the world. Because the word is truth. And now you'll have to re recognize the falsehood of the world. And that has, in many ways, you know, in some ways, gotten you into trouble, right? Be because you had, to, you had to make clear a line, a demarcation point and says, thus far will I go because only up to this is truth. Beyond that is already falsehood. And to a certain degree, uh, you know, the world has hated you. And it's okay. It's okay that you are distinct from the world as long as you're on the side of truth. It says there, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. So the world will hate them. Because they are not of the world to begin with, or now that they have believed in the truth, now that they have your word, they are no longer of the world. And just as I am not of the world, so pareho na kayo ni Jesus. Eh, alam mo naman si Jesus, he wasn't man-pleasing. He spoke the truth. It changed the hearts of people, but there were also people who hated him for it. So don't be surprised if in the process of, of proclaiming truth to the people around us, that people will begin to hate us for that. Now, hopefully it's not because of our obnoxiousness. <laughs> uh, there's a way to be able to speak the truth in kindness to people and with respect, right? Pero if the truth offends them and not your manner of speaking, then it is okay. Because even, even that, that also happened to Jesus too. Verse 15, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. So here is Jesus saying, the name of Jesus or the name of God keeps the people that has been entrusted to him and us by extension, his disciples now. But then he's also saying, even the word, you know, he's now asking the father, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. How? Through the word, apparently. In verse 16, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Verse 17, sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart in the truth. Your word is truth. So how can, how can these disciples, and by extension, us, how can these disciples be protected from the world, be continually set apart from the world, such that the evil one could not touch them, they can be sanctified or set apart through the word, because the word is truth. Which now brings us to our third thought on this passage. Jesus' word sanctifies us. Now that's a big word, I know. The idea of sanctification or consecration, they're pretty much the same thing. Uh, is to be set apart. To be set apart. It means that you will be set apart from something and for something. Set apart from, set apart for. To be set apart from the world. Jesus would repeatedly say, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. And then he would say, then he would say, sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart in the truth. Your word is truth. They are now sanctified for God. We shall see that in, in, in a short while, how that figures. So what does it mean to be sanctified for God? But first, let's talk about being sanctified from the world. We are not of the world as much as Jesus is not of the world. Why? Um, 
What's the difference? Well, for one, you're kingdom-minded now. You're a person of the kingdom. You're not just a citizen of earth. You're a citizen of heaven. And how does that make the difference? Well, it means you live by the kingdom. Okay. To live by the kingdom means to live by truth, to live by God's commands, to live by God's purpose for your life. You're no longer pursuing just your own dreams, which are usually the dreams of the world. You're pursuing God's dreams and God's purpose for you. You're a person of the kingdom. Wow. And then you operate by the principles of the kingdom. What does that mean? Someone hits you, you give your other cheek. What? Yeah, Jesus said that. Okay. So I... I, uh, I'll be more patient in that way. I won't necessarily hit back. Yeah, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. All right. So what will I do? Forgive. You know, three times, seven times, 70 times seven, forgive. Oh, man. That's the way of the kingdom. Yeah, you belong now to the kingdom. You live separately from the world. You no longer live by the world. But don't worry. When you operate by the principles of the kingdom, then you are also blessed by the economy of the kingdom. Oh, what, what does that mean? It means that when you sow one, it will return back to you 30, 60, 100 fold. When you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord and He will repay. When you sow sparingly, you'll only reap sparingly. But when you give generously, you'll also reap generously. These are, this is the economy of the king. This is how the kingdom of God works. So when you pray for people, the Lord will intervene in that situation and even turn the situation around. When you approach a situation, it's a dead end. You speak God's word and God's word breathes life into that situation and it changes. That's the economy of the kingdom. You live now by the principles of the kingdom. And you're kingdom-minded. Di ka nag-iisip, uh, para saan ba yung lahat ng meron ako? It's for the kingdom. It's no longer to build our own kingdom. It is for the kingdom. Every resource, every talent, every treasure, you know, our time, all of our lives are now given for the kingdom of God. And you know the priority of the kingdom is to bring the message of the kingdom to the rest of the world. So now that becomes your primary priority too. That becomes the purpose of your life. To honor God, to make disciples, to allow God to use where you're at in life as a platform for the gospel. Are you an owner of a business? May God use you to proclaim the gospel there. Are you a standout student? May God use you to, pray, to proclaim the gospel there. Are you a, a, a respectable wife? May the Lord use you uh, to, to be able to preach the gospel from that uh, platform. Form. The point is, we're no longer citizens of the earth. Not, not, we're no longer just citizens of the earth. We're also citizens of the kingdom, which is way more important and way more influential. We're not of the world, just as Jesus is not of the world. Now, when you come to think about that, to be set apart from the world means to be set apart, uh, to, to be different from the world because of truth. Now that you've been sanctified in truth, in the word of God, now you hold on to the truths, to these principles, and no longer just the principles of the world. What does that mean? What are the things that you read? What influences you most? What do you regularly watch or expose your eyes into? What are the things that you live by? What are the major principles that you live by? Now, you have many sources in the world, many self-help books, many business books, many principles by which the world uh, lives by, but they are, they are nothing like the Word of God. Because the Word of God, it's living and active. You know, you could, you could probably say, Pilipinong Salawi Kain, for example. Uh, kapag may isinoksok, may mauhugot. Di ba? So parang, oy, okay yun ah. That talks about sowing and reaping. Yes. And that's a really nice principle. But it is not as powerful as when you say, Lord, thank you that if I sow, I will reap generously. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Thank you, Lord, that as I sow, you will bless me. And you know, now you quote scripture, say from 2 Corinthians chapter 8-9. to 9. So the scripture that you live by is way more powerful than just human principle. Does that make sense? You've been sanctified in the truth. Which means now, the way you live your life, what you read in the morning, what you allow your eyes, what you listen to, uh, the podcasts that you listen to would always be biased towards the truth of what the Word of God says because you are sanctified by the truth. You've been set apart from the world. Now, if we summarize all of that, no? Jesus manifested His name and His Word, God's name and His Word to us. And Jesus' name protects us or keeps us and then His Word sanctifies us. So if you put that all together, as we abide in Jesus, His name keeps us and His word sanctifies us. As we abide in Jesus, His name 
keeps us and His Word sanctifies us. Now, if you, now, a, a bit of a thought. Does that really mean I can no longer enjoy the world? Because I've already been set apart from the world. Well, ito siya. The world is able to give you some, a measure of pleasure, but it's usually just temporary. And sometimes you pay for it in the future, right? Alam natin yan. I mean, many of us have lived in that place. So to actually be set apart from the world and to abide in Jesus is not a loss because you're actually being spared from all of the pain, the suffering that that life of sin would drag you into. And in fact, for those of you who've lived with God long enough, you've seen how living by God's principles. Now, ito, we hear this phrase, abide by the law. Uy, abide by the law. Yung batas, ibig sabihin, huwag kang magraran ng red uh, sa traffic light. Okay, abide by the law. That's also what it means to abide in Jesus and His Word. So when you abide in Jesus and His Word, many of you have already experienced this, God began to reverse the ill effects of sin in your life as you have consistently done that, abiding in Jesus and His Word. Now, an application for, our, uh, for, for this uh, message today, we'll find this in verse 18. Sabi natin kanina, di ba? You'll be set apart from the world, but you'll also be set apart for God. For what? Verse 18 says, As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Now, this is really interesting kasi parang, teka lang, nalilito na po, nalilito na po ako, Lord. Kanina sabi nyo, uh, you're not in the world and I'm not of the world just as you're not of the world and you want us and you're saying to the Father, don't take them out of the world but uh, rather sanctify them by the truth but now you're sending us back to the world. Pa- 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 paano ba yan? <laughs> Send them back to the world. That's what you've been set apart for. It's actually a sequence, okay? Ito, ah, l- let me read this to us. We are not of the world, but we are not to be taken out of the world, but just to be kept from the evil one. That was Jesus' prayer. So you got that, huh? We are not of the world, but we are not to be taken out of the world. Just to be, pro- rather, you, we just need to be protected from the evil one and the world. And we are to be set apart from the world and then eventually be sent back into the world. <laughs> I'll go through that again. We are not of the world, but we are not to be taken out of the world. Rather, we are to be set apart from the world so that we can be sent back into the world. Now, does that make sense? That's the purpose why God sets us apart. For Him, for His purpose, for His agenda, for the wonderful thing that He is doing in the world today, for the way that He wants to bring life to all mankind through the message of the gospel. That's the purpose of your life. That's what you've been set apart for. There's a reason. Hindi lang to parang, oh, para hindi ka magkasala, para talagang, ano ka lang, uh, talagang, uh, yung sobra ka lang holy, na, na hindi ka at all nagtatouch ng mga, na, ano, mga sinful na mga bagay. Hindi. God wants to set you apart para masanay ka na, na you're living apart from the world and you're living by the standards and by the truth of God so that now you could be sent back into the world and you're sort of a powerful force and the world is no longer able to influence you but rather you're the one influencing the world instead. That's powerful. That, I think, my friend, is the greatest adventure you could ever live in this life. Fulfilling the purpose of God for you. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Rather, we're sent into the world. That's the challenge that I'd like to give to you today. Would you be willing to go through that progression? Lord, your name and your word keeps me and sanctifies me. You've set me apart. So God, am I willing to believe that I am no longer of the world? Check. Lord, may I, uh, Lord, am I willing to embrace that I am set apart from the world? Check. Lord, am I willing to be, now that I'm set apart from the world, am I willing to be sent back into the world to be a witness? I hope you would check that too. That's the challenge to set forth to us as we continue to abide. Now, to close our conversation, in verse 19, it says there, and for their sake, I consecrate myself. Now, Jesus himself has done this. He's gone ahead of us but when it comes to, to consecration. Diba, yung challenge niya, sanctify them in your word. Your word is true. Set them apart. Pero sabi ni Jesus, I, I actually set myself apart for them. <laughs> Oh yeah, he set the example. And for their sake, verse 19, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I consecrate myself. An alternative translation of this in the NLT, New Living Translation says, and I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Jesus set the example of being sanctified for us. 
By his sacrifice on the cross, he has taken the penalty of our sin. By his resurrection from the dead, he has, um, he has defeated death and he now offers that undefeatable life to us who would believe. And as you have believed, as you have believed, now you're also set apart for God, for his word, from the world, so that you can be sent back into the world. Are you willing to respond to Jesus in that way? Who sanctifies you? The Holy Spirit does. By reminding you of Jesus' words. And what would your life look like when this actually becomes true? You need to say, wow, this is exciting. So actually I could live my life a new way. Yes. You know, you believed in God's name. You put God's name on your family, on everything you, you touch. You abide by God's word every day. You're set apart from the world. And now you allow Jesus to send you back into the world. Man, that's a powerful life. That, my friend, is abiding in Jesus and his word. And I pray that you may begin to see the possibilities of that life. That if I would consistently do that for the rest of my life, before I know it, I have fulfilled God's purpose for my life and for my family. And before you know it, I would have finished strong in my faith. I like for us to just uh, spend a few moments in prayer and just begin to apply that and see how that comes to pass in our life. Lord, we respond to your word today. We recognize that as we abide in you, Jesus, your name keeps us and your word sanctifies us. And so, Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful. Lord, today we surrender to your name. And we embrace your word. Let your word today, God, set us apart. Father, we surrender to you. And we embrace your word as that which sets us apart from the world. Lord, thank you. I'd like to bring a challenge for those of you who might need to make that decision to actually embrace Jesus' name and his word that you might be set apart from the world. This might be a good opportunity for you to do that. Let me pray with you now. Lord, help those of us, God, that there are areas in our lives, Lord, that we need to surrender to you. Today, Lord, in this moment, we would like to surrender it to you completely. We recognize you, Jesus, as the Lord of our lives. Thank you for your name that you've put on us to bless us and protect us. And now, Lord, we surrender to your word. Your word is truth. We acknowledge that. And in this moment, we forsake falsehood. We forsake the things we believe in that are not aligned with your word. And that God, as you, as you now fill us with your name and with your word, Lord, set us apart from the world. We embrace this, God. Today, we have been sanctified, made holy, set apart from the world, and set apart for you. In Jesus' name. Now, final prayer. Allow us to send you back into the world. That you might fulfill God's purpose for your life. That you might lead where you are. That God might use you in a powerful way. As you allow God's word to sanctify you, set you apart. And now Jesus is sending you back to the world that you might be a light and a soul and a witness. Let me pray with you now. Lord, that we send forth, Lord, Victory Santa Rosa, and the rest of our people, God, that as they go back to their places of work, as they go back to their families, as they go back, Lord, to the rest of the week from Monday to Saturday, Lord, would you send them back into the world, Lord, with much strength, Lord, with the sanctification that comes from your spirit, Lord, with the power that comes from your name. Lord, today, Lord, Lord, you've already set them apart from the world and now you're sending them back. So today, Lord, Holy Spirit, move through them in a powerful way that as they pray for people, people would get healed. Lord, as they pray for situations, breakthrough would come. Lord, that as they pray for their family members, your name would rest upon them and that you would bless them and that, Lord, you would use them to be a witness, a salt and a light, that they would bring the message of the kingdom, Lord, to the people around around them. Lord, today we send them forth. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for the past six weeks of Abide. And we pray that you would continue to abide in Jesus, to continue to, in your faith in Him, daily, consistently, for the rest of your life, till you fulfill God's purpose and you finish strong in your faith. The Lord bless you, everyone. Happy Sunday. We'll see you next week. Sa kabigatan, 
Ikayamang nakikinig sa aking bawat dalangin. Pagkapanan nalik ay nasusubukan. Ikaw ang tagapagligtas at ang nagmamahal sa akin. Pupurihin ka, pupurihin ka, Panginoon. Pupurihin ka sa lahat ng pagkakataon. Diyos ng pag-ibig, aking ipagsasabi Iyong kadakilaan ay ihahayag Sa'yo kapangyarihan, puso'y namama 